family. This is Tanya Rutledge of the Nguzu Saba 365. I'm coming to you to say happy Habar Ghani Hump Day. We are doing our third session of our Habar Ghani Hump Day Kwanzaa series. Unfortunately, we were doing it about two days too late. I apologize for that. That was just due to scheduling and a little bit of a health issue. Um, but so excited to be with you guys today so that we can talk about how to get ready for Kwanzaa. That is today's news. How to get ready for Kwanzaa. So maybe you are thinking Kwanzaa is coming, or maybe you're thinking I don't know when Kwanzaa is, or I've never heard of Kwanzaa, or I've heard of it, and I don't know, you know, I'm not sure what to do with it, or is it the Black Christmas, or what is it? Make sure that you check out the other two previous uh, sessions that we've done about um, Kwanzaa, about holiday gifting um, in this series. Check us out at the Nguzu Saba 365 on Facebook, and you can find all that uh, all that information. Um, we actually did a series about uh, the less model, which is a model of how to think about your holiday spending. We did um, a session on what is Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa that really looks at what how Kwanzaa was founded, what are the foundations of Kwanzaa. But today we want to get to how do you actually prepare for Kwanzaa? So what do you actually need right now? Because you're right you got about a week Kwanzaa's coming but even though you just have a week you still have a week it's not too late to start working towards celebrating Kwanzaa so we're going to backtrack a little bit and we're going to cover something that I already covered um, in our last uh, in our last uh, series episode and that was what is Kwanzaa so just quickly Kwanzaa is an Afro-centered social holiday, um, and it's based on first fruit celebrations that took that take place or took place um, with our ancestors um, back in Africa throughout um, all kinds of societies. Now, um, just briefly, first fruit celebrations are basically the celebration of the concept that we have what we have because of the creator and because of our ancestors. So the first crops that we grow, we give those back um, to our ancestors. Let's go back. Um, Kwanzaa is celebrated December the 26th to January the 1st. So like I said, you've got about eight days to get ready. Um, and even if you don't get ready by the eighth day, you can start celebrating after that, and if you know us by now, if you know me and you know what I go for, this is a 365 day thing. So this is just kind of a jump off to what you're gonna do for the whole year. Okay, so December 26th to January 1st, and each day represents one of the seven principles um, which are referred to in Swahili as the Nguzu Saba. Now, if you do not know what those principles are, I would implore you to go back to our what Kwanzaa series where we detail that. Um, we're also going to give you some resources and if you tap into some of these resources, um, that will give you some information as well. And again, if you check us out on the Nguzu Saba 365 Facebook page, we go over that a lot. We talk about just in snippets what these principles are. Uh, and we try to give you snippets of why they are important. So I'm not going to go over those right this moment because I want us to focus on how we're getting ready. The official colors for Kwanzaa are the red, the black, and the green, RBG, okay? So red is for the struggle um, for our, of our people or the blood. Black is for our people, and green is for our future or for the land. Um, so the decorations for Kwanzaa, if you're thinking about how to decorate a classroom or how to decorate your household, are generally based around those colors. But um, it doesn't have to be just those colors. Um, you will see people with lots of Afrocentric prints and art, um, et cetera, et cetera. The list could go on. Just be creative. Um, you could have drawings. Your kids can do drawings and hang them up. You do not have to go spend a lot of money because you're celebrating Kwanzaa. And if you did spend some money, it typically is much, 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 much less um, than what people typically would spend on Christmas. Okay, so there are seven symbols of Kwanzaa. And when we think about what do we need to get to, to, to be prepared for the um, holiday or for this period, that's where we wanna spend the bulk of this time on. So 
what are those seven sim, uh, symbols of Kwanzaa? Because that's kind of our shopping list. If we're going to do some shopping um, beforehand, this is what we want to focus on. Okay, so that first symbol is called the makeka, um, which means mat. Okay, uh, and it's usually um, it's usually going to be made of straw, but it can be made of fabric. It can be made of paper. I've seen I've seen and done art projects where you basically do a weaving pattern with strips of black, um, green, and red paper, and you can make them for literally nothing. Um, and that mat is the um, surface in which all other um, Kwanzaa symbols are placed. The mat is supposed to be representative of the foundation of African traditions. In our history. So if you take a look here, you can see our mat. Right there. This is our mat. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Our second our second symbol of Kwanzaa is the mazo. Mazo means, means crops. So these are the crops fruits, vegetables that are supposed to represent traditional African harvest celebrations and show respect for the people um, who labor to grow the crops, okay? So you can see in our artwork, let me change the color on this because you cannot see that yellow very well. The mazeo, the crops right here, okay? So you see, it doesn't have to be anything super elaborate. You can have a basket full of fruit or you can have one fruit. This is gonna be up to you particularly at the point in which you've never celebrated this before. Okay, the third symbol of Kwanzaa is the Kanara, which is the candle holder. And this represents the original stock from which our African ancestors came from, okay? And it holds the seven candles. So here, obviously, is our Kanara right about here, okay? Um, and as you can see, it is holding the seven candles. Okay, the fourth symbol of Kwanzaa is the Mishuma Saba. Mishuma Saba means the seven candles. Each of these candles represents one of the seven principles. The candles are red, green, and black, which is symbol, uh, which is a symbol of our people, the struggle, um, and as I said before, our future, the land. Um, the black candle in the, in the center is actually the first one to be lit. So on the first day, that candle is lit, okay? And then one candle is lit each night, starting at the far left, which is the red candle here. And then you alternate between the red and green candles working towards the, towards the, from the outside towards the center of the candles. And I said I wasn't gonna talk about the principles, but I am just at this moment because this gets confusing for people how you're supposed to light it. So this first, candle, the black candle, that actually represents umoja, which means unity. But I'm doing this from memory. I think I'm right. Forgive me if I'm not. Um, our second candle um, would be kujitagulia, which means self-determination right here. Let me do that. Okay. Our third candle if I'm thinking of this right, would be Ujima, which means collective work and responsibility. Our fourth candle would be Ujama, which means cooperative economics. Our fifth candle would be Nia, that's my niece's name, and it represents purpose. Our sixth candle, and remember, this black candle is the one that lights each one. So every night that black candle is going to get lit. So I know for me, my black candle worked its way down and it's much shorter than the other one. So that's the one I have to replace the most often each year. Um, but the sixth candle is Kuumba, which means creativity. And last but certainly not least, our last candle would be Imani, which means faith. Now I have seen the order of this changed and, and sometimes you'll see that in, in different illustrations, 
but uh, but to my knowledge, this would be the correct way to light. So this would be the correct representation, which means it's not an order of the principles themselves. It's kind of out of order because that first candle is Umoja, which is the first principle, or, or the, the first candle be lit is Umoja, which is the first principle, but it's not first in the, in the order of these candles, okay? All right. And remember, I'm just giving you a preview. This is a shopping list. So I'm not really going to go over what you say and what you do the day of Kwanzaa. Not yet. This is just kind of your shopping list. What do you need to pick up? Okay. The fifth symbol of of Kwanzaa is the Muhendi, which is the corn. And this is to represent African children and the promise of their future. So one ear of corn, it will be set out for each child of the family. And in a family without children, one ear is set out symbolically to represent the children of the community. So you can partake with or without children. Um, I, I actually um, like that fact because I do not want to exclude people from this concept because they don't have children. That would make absolutely no sense. So here, and here's the ear of corn. Now, as you can see, there is a different name and a different spelling, like Ubunzi. I'm not sure why I would have to investigate that. And maybe it just means plural. I'm not quite sure. So, but trust me, where you see this represented in most pictures, it's going to say Muhendi. I just love this illustration because it's so detailed, but I haven't got clarification on that. So I just want to make sure I mentioned that because I know it looks like a contradiction. All right, the sixth symbol of Kwanzaa is the Kikumbe Cha Umoja. Kikumbe Cha Umoja. This means the unity cup, okay? Here's our unity cup. I actually have one exactly like this downstairs in my house. And it symbolizes the first principle of Kwanzaa, which is unity or Umoja. Um, and this is about the unity of our families and about the unity of our people. The cup is to pour libations, which could be water or juice, and that uh, for friends and for family, okay? And we'll, we can talk about another time, like what does all that look like? But that's what, that's what you need to physically have. Okay, the last symbol of Kwanzaa is the Zawadi, uh, which is the gifts. Um, the gifts represent the labor of the parents and the rewards of their children. Gifts are given to children to educate and enrich them, okay? These gifts can include a book, a piece of art, an educational toy. At least one of the gifts is a symbol of African heritage. One thing I know that I do with my son, and I try to make sure if I can, if I can pull him in by getting something from a black owned business or a black vendor, um, and I can make sure that he is aware that this was per or that this was either made by black hands or black people benefit from it. So we're looking at the the, the principle of um, Ujama or cooperative economics. That's something I will do, even if it gets a little bit more capitalistic or materialistic. For example, um, I got my son a fifty dollar um, gift certificate to a black owned toy store once, which he could have used to got station game or what have you but it was a black owned toy store because I wanted him to uh, because I, I wanted to get something that would show him that that's possible that you can own your own toy store the um, because I knew I don't get him Christmas gifts so he kind of doesn't get that piece from me and so I wanted to show him the principles and highlight the principles but I also gave him a little something that was from that was it was uh, supporting a black owned business, even though for him, it was like, okay, I'm supporting a black owned business, but I still get to get this toy that I want. Um, I've gotten uh, kids routinely books. Um, that's, a, that's a big thing that um, I'm into this year. If you are looking for uh, black books online, it's definitely much easier to find these things than it was for you probably now than it was for me when my son was a little younger. But if you can check on just us books, um, Third World Press, 
Um, there are so many uh, great books that are coming out uh, and that have been out for years that you could order online. There are so many options now for us when we don't live in an area that has black bookstores to be able to purchase liter literature for our kids. Um, and we can turn that literature into memories when we read with them. So I just wanna push that piece about books. In terms of art, it might seem, huh, well, art for kids, actually, there's, there's some really cool ways to incorporate art into your kid's bedroom. So it might be something as, as simple as there's a black comic book that has great posters that a, your kid could hang in their room, um, educational toys. There are, there are actually a number of games that, are, that have been put out by Black people, for Black people, about the Black experience, some things that aren't about the Black experience that we can have so much fun with our kids doing. So, Zawadi is important, and uh, Zawadi, um, and the and, and this context does look a lot different from Christmas gifts, and I want to put that out there because I know the, the that that the, the timing of these things are purposely similar, purposely. Um, so, Zawadi is a gift, but Zawadi is typically not going to be. I go to. GameStop and purchase the PlayStation 5 for our kid, for my child. I would, I would say, do not link those two things together unless you're able to get it maybe from a black vendor and you can highlight a principle with it. I would, I would get that for them maybe as a gift for something else. I would not tie it back to Kwanzaa because it takes away from the meaning and it doesn't really support the principles necessarily. If you can figure out a way to get it to, to support it, let me know because I'm always open to suggestions. Okay, so you might be saying to yourself by now, we don't have any of this stuff. I don't have this stuff at home. I don't just have like porn and unity cups and all these things laying around. Well, don't worry, because your girls got you. Where to shop for Kwanzaa? Okay, so we all know we're in the middle of a pandemic, okay? So I'm not going to say that all these places are feel safe places that you can get these things from, because I, I believe there's some places that are just not open, like Dusabo Museum is not open, I don't think right now. I'm not totally sure. But I would say these are some great places for you to start. They are primarily in the Chicago land area, but some definitely where are, you're able to order and ship. Some say they can get things to you within three to five days. So um, you can try, it's a blackthing.com. You can try contacting the Dusabo Museum. That's where I got all my stuff from years ago, but I do not know that they're open right now. Um, and I would say, even if you're not going to purchase, Take a look at the website for the DuSable, give them a call, see how you can support them if you have the means. I know this is a rough year, but for the DuSable Museum, which was a struggling smaller museum anyway before COVID, this I believe has been devastating to not be able to let people through the doors, to not be able to have people to fund um, the existence of that museum. And it's really a treasure. If you're not from the Chicagoland area, just look it up if you've never been here before. If you are a Chicagoan and you've never been here, oh my gosh, please do come and support once this thing is over and we can hit those doors again. I'm hoping maybe by February, maybe by Black History Month, we could do something, but I know it's been difficult for them to um, come up with like the PPE and the things that are required um, to open. And it's also been difficult because they need the numbers to fund these things, but with social distancing, they don't have the numbers. They couldn't have the numbers when the other museums were opening. So I just want to put in a little shameless plug for them. I just love them. I have nothing to do with them uh, other, aside from my love for them. Um, but just want to put that out there. Um, you can also uh, get a membership there as well. And it is a a membership that you pay for, that's another way to support them. Okay, let's keep going. Culture, con uh, Culture Connection 360, great store, has been open during the pandemic. I think they're renovating right now, but I believe they're still open. The blackmall.com has been a consummate for years. I have gained a lot of inspiration by watching the journey there um, and watching the journey of their founder. So if you've never been on the website for the Black Mall, they just updated their website not too long ago and it looks great. So check them out. Frontline uh, book distribution, I think they're open, not quite sure about that. 
Tyra Imports in Chicago, definitely open. Definitely give them a call if you're looking for anything related to Kwanzaa, um, Afrocentric merchandise, et cetera. Afro, Afriwear Books um, is in Maywood. I believe they are open because I do know um, Dawn and Day Creations was selling um, the headscarves and matching masks there during the pandemic. So I do believe that they're open. And if they're not open physically, you can order from there. So check them out. Also go to Kwanzaa.net. Um, I actually believe they're like kind of the official seller um, or authorized seller for the, the US organization um, that is really the, 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 the founder um, of Kwanzaa, who is uh, Dr. Milana Karenga. This is, this, is their, this is that organization. So check out Kwanzaa.net because you can get lots of um, other resources there about Kwanzaa as well. And then you can also go to this link on bookroo.com. And I'm sorry, I know it's got a lot of letters to it. It's just the way it copied for me. They have on there a list of, I think like top 10 or top 15 children's books on Kwanzaa. And that was part of the way that I learned about Kwanzaa and what you needed was when I bought books for my son. Now, as, I, as, as I progressed through my journey, I bought books that were related to Kwanzaa that, get, that went more in depth about the principles versus just the versus more the symbols. But, they, but these books are great. I definitely have some of these um, at home and we'll be purchasing some others soon. Now, you can also go to Amazon or Etsy to get these things. Use it sparingly because oftentimes these are not black vendors. You are supporting someone else trying to capitalize off of something that was created not for that reason. So look for black vendors if you're going on Etsy and Amazon. Ways to be able to tell is if the person presents themselves that way. If you go to their website and it shows that, um, you can look at other products that they sell to see whether or not it's in line. Sometimes you'll look and you'll see, okay, uh, there's some things that seem like they don't match up. And so I maybe wanna stay away from those. I would also avoid big box stores like Target and Walmart if possible. If you can go to these stores and find black home brands, and I, and I mean that for gifting and things like that, if you can, if you can find a black owned brand that sells Kwanzaa merchandise there, I'm not sure because I haven't looked in years. I don't think so. But if you do, feel free to reach out to me because I would love to know about it. Um, so I would avoid them if you can. Now, in terms of crops, in terms of like the, the, the mazo and in terms of like the muhindi, the corn, if you can go to a black grower or a black farmer's market or something like that, do it. Um, if you have your own um, garden and you can use something from your garden, do it. If you know somebody that has their own garden and you can get something from them, do it. Try to avoid non-black owned grocery stores um, for these items, but I'm gonna be real with you. There are not a lot of black owned grocery stores. So your opportunity to do that is few and far between. If all else fails, you can go to Jewel and go get a ear of corn. It's okay. We may not have a choice on that, okay? And if you are just stressed for time, if you are already stressed out, if you are low on funds, if any of those things are true for you, you can make your own symbols. You can get some construction paper, some brown construction paper and make your own kind of canara and do some things symbolically. Hey, I can't, I don't have the candles. Okay, well, I'm gonna get um, some paper candles and I'm gonna pretend to light it by putting a little fake flame on it. You can do that, it is okay, all right? If you need to, just go get some cheap candles that you have on your house and put seven there and go through the ritual so you can start getting in the practice of doing it. That's fine. Nobody else is in the house with you. Nobody else is judging you. Um, and if you live by yourself and there's nobody else in the house, you can still do this. We're about, we're about community as a whole and no one is left out of that, nobody. So whether you have a family with eight people and there's a big party in and of itself, you know, just inside your house. So you don't have to worry about COVID because everybody lives in your house anyway in your family. 
If you have a family of three and that's all that's in your house, those three can do it. If you have a family of one and it's just you in the house, you can do this symbolically. This is, we are a collective community family. No one is left out, absolutely no one. So don't think because you don't have kids or because nobody else lives with you or because no one else in your house is interested in partaking this, that you can't do it. Because I'm gonna tell you, I'm not from a family. I'm gonna share something personal with you all. I'm not from a family that any of this is necessarily valued um, or understood or even understood. This is um, an understanding that I came to and something that I have grown to love and find value in. It doesn't mean everybody else in my family finds value, but they know about it. They don't all necessarily partake. I partake and it helps to strengthen me in those values. And I hope to pass that along to my children, regardless of what anyone else in my family would or would not do. So if you, you so anybody can take part, that's my, that's kind of my take home with that. All right. So start getting ready for Kwanzaa today. You can start today. Okay. There's no need to wait. We got eight days. Start today. All right. So I want you all to like, share, follow, and stay principled family. Love you all. Have a nice night.